My conversation with Dr. Barton about sound pollution several weeks ago got me thinking about how other animals react to sound, especially because he and I discussed possible mechanisms for the behavioral changes he observed. When Dr. Barton's group played certain kinds of music or soundtracks, ladybugs ate fewer aphids and grasshoppers ate more carbs. Dr. Barton's group isn't quite sure why these things are happening, but he did compare the grasshopper's behavior to other responses he'd seen during his PhD. He suggested that the grasshoppers might be exhibiting a fear response, which got me wondering, why do certain sounds seem to cause fear? Actually, I'd been wondering about scary sounds for a while because my cat acts like the world is ending every time I turn on the vacuum cleaner. I started to wonder if the fear response from my cat is at all related to the apparent fear responses Dr. Barton has been seeing in his research. You know, I've got my gut sort of intuition. I think it has to do with some of that like driving bass and like lower frequencies. I think that's what the urban sounds had plenty of that like, you know, jackhammer, like dun, 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 dun. it's creating vibration. The truth is we don't know the mechanism and people have criticized us in the paper, you know. I went into this with a few hypotheses of my own. Maybe rock and roll, urban noise pollution, and the vacuum cleaner sound scary because they have low tones that sound like the growls of a predator, or at least like the sound of a very large animal. Or maybe it's high-pitched, sharp tones from those same sources that sound scary because they sound like the pain or alarm calls of other animals. But it turns out searching why is my pet afraid of the vacuum cleaner on the internet doesn't return any super clear responses, meaning it must be a little more complicated. So my next step was the scientific literature, where I searched for terms like predator, sound, frequency, and fear. My search revealed a lot of results to sift through, so we'll get to those in a moment. But first, I need to thank two friends whose expertise has helped me organize everything I found. Corey from 12 Tone helped me understand the sound terminology, and Xander from Art Explains helped me understand the neuroscience behind fear and hearing. Both of their channels are awesome, so go check them out. Okay, what did I find when I delved into the scientific literature? Well, first, it was actually pretty cool to realize that, at least in the search results I found, there isn't a clear consensus on why certain sounds are scary. That means this is really a question worth exploring. <laughs> I found lots of papers where scientists observed the fear responses of certain animals to the sounds of their natural predators versus other predators. These studies tended to reveal a learning or familiarity component. If the sound is of a predator you recognize and are regularly threatened by, you're more likely to act afraid of it, which makes sense. However, a study I've linked below looked at the responses of captive-bred primates to different predator and non-predator sounds. This study is interesting because the captive-bred animals had never heard any of these sounds before, so they didn't have that familiarity I just mentioned. The researchers found that their primates responded with fear to most of the sounds they played, even some of the ones from non-predators. The scientists wrote that the primates do not recognize specific predator vocalizations, but may respond to vocal qualities. So what specific qualities could make sounds scary? I kept digging through articles and found a really interesting concept, nonlinear sound. The name pretty much says what it is. These are sounds that have irregular variations in them. It was suggested by at least one paper I've linked below that the irregularity of nonlinear sounds could be scary to animals because it's unpredictable. But they also mentioned that many warning calls, as well as other predator, fear, or violence-related sounds have nonlinear qualities. Okay, that all makes sense, but what does it have to do with Dr. Barton's research on rock and roll and urban noise pollution. Here's where Corey helped me out by explaining nonlinearity is a key component of distortion, so it would be all over rock and metal. This is a super cool connection because it might explain why the rock and roll used in Dr. Barton's experiment had an effect on the ladybugs. If rock and roll is full of nonlinear sound, then it could be just as scary as any predator or alarm calls in nature. That probably goes ditto for the vacuum cleaner because the sounds it makes vary as it moves across the floor. But even if 
the vacuum makes scary nonlinear sounds. After all of these years, my cat should have learned that it's not actually dangerous, right? So I went a bit deeper in the literature and asked Xander to help me understand how our brains process sounds, especially scary ones. He explained that our brains have different regions of cells that are tuned to listen for certain sound frequencies and patterns. When we hear a sound, some of these regions work on figuring out what the sound is and where it's coming from, while other regions of cells try to decide if the sound is scary and then send a signal to the fear center of our brains. Although these two processes begin at the same time in our brains, Xander said the fear signal is faster, so you may react with fear even though you identify the sound as something not scary at roughly the same time. This might explain why my cat runs for cover every time the vacuum cleaner makes noise. Even though it hasn't ever hurt her, her brain might be processing the scary nonlinear sound of the vacuum so fast that she doesn't have time to think about the fact that it's not actually dangerous, and eventually she may teach herself that the afraid feeling goes along with the vacuum cleaner, to the point where she might be scared if she just sees the vacuum. So there we have it! Loud sounds with irregularities or nonlinear qualities may just be perceived by brains as being super scary. And in case you thought this was only about animals being afraid of sounds, don't forget that you're an animal too. So I've left links to two articles below that talk about how nonlinear sounds can be used to affect our emotions when we interact with movies and video games. Thanks again to Corey and Xander for providing clear and simple explanations for some of the ideas in this video. And what do you think? Does this explanation for scary sounds make sense? Have you noticed sounds in video games and movies making you feel a certain way? Are your pets afraid of the vacuum cleaner? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Then go check out my Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.